Revelation chapter number 12. Revelation chapter 12. <clears throat> Once you find your place there, do you mind standing with me? And let's read the Word of God together. You read it silently while I read it aloud and we'll trudge through this scripture here, all right? <clears throat> the Bible says in verse number 7, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceived the whole world. <laughs> He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Amen. Which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. I want to talk to you. It's actually the title will be finished later on in this particular uh, admonition tonight. But to begin with is I'd like to kind of go off of that phrase. And they overcame him. We can overcome him. Amen. Lord, I pray that you'd bless the preaching of your word tonight and help us as we study, as we think, as we, as we uh, wrestle in the scripture together tonight. I pray, God, that it would find new meaning to our heart. There's nothing we're going to say that's new. Uh, every preacher across this country somewhere has probably preached uh, some of the general ideas that we will preach tonight. But the fact of the matter is, uh, though it is not a new message. We have a heart that needs to hear it again. And so, Lord, I pray that you'd help us tonight. Help us not to just hear with our ears. But, oh God, may it go past that, uh, uh, that hearing element of our ears and move on down into our heart. And may it make a change in our life. And this very day, may we have some victories. And in the days ahead, that would come just simply by your word. And we'll love you for it and we'll thank you. I don't know the heart of every person here. There may be somebody lost. May they tonight still find Christ this evening who longs for them uh, to come to him so that he can save them. And I pray, oh God, you touch their heart in that case. We'll sure love you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. I want to say this about my boys. Uh, you think they can sing. You ought to hear them preach sometime. Man, I'm telling you. Now, Daddy, before long, is going to have to take a seat to them as they're going to far out-preach Dad uh, before long. But I sure love the boys, and I thank the Lord for them. And uh, I asked you to pray for them. A couple of them is going to be making a trek. I think they're going to leave tonight and drive part of the way to head to Spotsylvania, Pens or Spotsylvania uh, Virginia. I'll get it out in a minute. Uh, every time I say Spotsylvania, I want to say Pennsylvania. It's not Pennsylvania, but anyway, Virginia. And then we're going to meet up next Sunday down in Roanoke, Virginia. So if you would just pray for them, I appreciate that. And uh, do you mind if I mention those back there? They do have those CDs back there. Those are the two CDs. One of them, uh, just so you know, uh, they're, they're two on one now, but uh, the one is a CD that uh, was dedicated to my wife's dad, my father-in-law, who I called dad very close to love dearly and uh, it's a it's a uh, got songs that really help in the time of need in your life and uh, so anyway if it'd be a blessing to you they're back there you can see the guys and hopefully it will but thank you again for all that you've done here in this passage <clears throat> by way of introduction I'd like for us to bring our, our minds together around two words first of all the word interpretation and then the word observation 
And uh, by that, I'm saying this. I have uh, heard preachers say, you know, uh, we preachers ought to just preach the text and let the text say what it says. Well, that is true. But I believe that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Do you agree with that? And is profitable. <laughs> so that means not only is it textual, I believe that there's also some observation or application, if you will, that can be made from Scripture. Amen. And so here in this text, uh, I would just like to say that by way of interpretation, there's only one. The Bible says what it means, and it means exactly what it says. So what in the world is this talking about? Well, uh, this portion of the Bible uh, hasn't been fulfilled yet. And it's known as the doctrine of eschatology. The study of the last days, this portion of time, commences with the rapture of his church and concludes with the residing in that holy city. Amen. Uh, I say hallelujah to that. The rapture of his church and finally one day will reside in that holy city. Oh, man. No, come on, Jerry. You got to stay online. Uh, no, I'm just going to tell you. I can't wait for that holy city. But I'm going to tell you something else. I can't wait to that new heaven and new earth. You think this thing's something to look at. You wait till one day we see this old ark, that new heaven and new earth, which I, I personally believe is going to be just like this one here, but it's going to be back like it was in the days of the Garden of Eden. It's going to be beautiful without any kind of uh, thorns, uh, any th kind of bugs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's going to be a beautiful place. And I'm going to tell you what a wonderful place it's going to be to live. Amen. Uh, there in that, uh, on that new earth. And uh, uh, <laughs> this is what I like about it. We'll go from that new earth back into that holy city. Rejoice and shout around Jesus. Then we'll go out and praise what he's made. And then we'll come back and rejoice and shout about who he is. And then we'll go. <laughs> I told you, you didn't want me to get into that. I'll never get done with this message. But I'm just saying, hallelujah, there's coming a day. This old earth going to be done with. And this particular time period that we are looking at falls in that particular area of time where the rapture of the church has taken place. The church will see no part of the tribulation period. Somebody say amen there. I am sick and tired of hearing these people who are mid-tribbers and who are post-trib and whatever trib and so on. Hey, uh, Jesus is still a coming. He's coming for his bride. He's going to rapture. Man, i got to get through this message. Uh, but he's going to come and get us and get us out of here. You won't have to face any of the tribulation period. We're out of here. Hallelujah to God. With a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. And it concludes with, as I said, this city. So this particular passage falls between these two events. During that tribulation period, uh, and this may help you a little bit as you study the book of Revelation on your own, just remember wherever John is, generally that's where the church is going to be. <laughs> I like that all by myself. The beginning, he's here on earth. Chapter 4. He's out here. He doesn't come back to this earth all the way through the book of Revelation. Amen. He's caught up in the Spirit. Amen. I like it all by myself. He's up there in glory, seeing what's going on in glory, looking down at what's happening down here, but no part of the tribulation. I just like it all by myself. Amen. But in the midst of this tribulation period, literally, and this is what I'm trying to get to, but you won't let me. But in the midst of this tribulation period, Satan and Michael and the angels with Michael and the devil and his angels are going to have this battle and he's not going to prevail. Woo! That's hallelujah time all by itself. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm primed up tonight. Amen. That's hallelujah time all by itself. I'm saying he will not prevail. He'll be cast down to this earth and he'll be there upon this earth and he'll be uh, going about deceiving the nations. Uh, the Bible says that during that time that there'll be people here that will still get saved that will not, oh man, that's a lot of stuff, but won't accept the mark of the beast and they will overcome Satan in their life by verse number, what is it? Verse number 11, by the blood of the testimony and by the word or by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. So that's the interpretation, alright? Took me a long time to get through that. Man, you guys, 
They are just easy to preach to. But then I want you to see the application and here are observation that we can make that I really want to get a hold of. Watch this now. Anytime that God has done good work or his grace work, Satan raises his ugly head and opposes God's work. And it's imperative, ladies and gentlemen, that we know our nemesis. And so if the Bible, and it is, has application to me from even a text that will take place yonder there in time, I can look at that and say, okay, if that's how they're going to overcome him, I believe what God uses to work for them then will work for me right now. But pretty simple, isn't it? Huh? Amen. And so here's what he says. He says they overcame him. So that tells me that we can. We need to know our ne nemesis. Uh, we see his identity. He's known as a devouring foe, 1 Peter 5 a. He's seen as a deceptive foe in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, verse 13 through 15. In 2 Corinthians 2 11, just stay with me now. He's known as a destructive foe. Satan is real. And he really wants to ruin your life. And he wants to ruin mine. Well, why? Because of his interest. Are you listening? What is his interest? Number one, it's to hold to them which are his. You're here tonight and you say, no, wait, 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 preacher. Them that are his, yes. Those that he already has possession of. Those that are already a part of his clan, if you will. Well, who's that? Anybody that's never been saved. He owns them. Oh, now wait a minute, preacher. I don't know about... Well, well let's read the scripture, 2 Corinthians 4, before you start starting off your mind and going off somewhere where you don't know where you're going. Amen. Let's get the word of God. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 4 says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Who's he say? the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them in the book of John chapter number 8 verse number 44 Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees here's what he says to them ye are of your father the devil what does that mean? he owns them if you've never been saved are you looking at me? Satan already has control of you but Jesus wants to change that control hallelujah to God I'm telling you, there's not a better person to take control of your life than the Lord Jesus Christ. He's not a taskmaster. He is a wonderful master. Amen. Amen. He loves us. He cares for us. And so uh, we have this uh, is true. Ephesians 2, verses 2 through 3, where it talks about you and I. It says that we were, we were once a part of the God who controlled this world. And so, therefore, Satan wants to hold to them that are his. He wants to stop people from getting saved. That's the great battleground. Do you know why it's hard for you to live the Christian life? Here it is at a crux. If you live the Christian life, somebody will see your life and say, man, I want what that person has and Satan loses one of his. Oh, come on now. That's actually the battleground. Why is it? Otherwise, if you got saved and there was no problem with the fact that other people might get saved, Satan just told, would go right on off and not even bother you. But the reason he hounds you is he does not want your testimony to affect other people. He wants to hold on to those that are his. So what does he do? Get a hold of this. He hinders those that are not. <laughs> Man, he dogs us. Man, he's after us. Man, he works hard to hinder us. He wants to disrupt our life. He wants to cause disunity. He wants to destroy us. He wants to affect our testimony. I've got to hurry. He wants to get our temper out of order. Come on. He wants our temple to be out of order. That's your body that the Holy Ghost of God lives in. He wants your thoughts completely out of order. He wants your tongue out of control. And that's what he works hard at doing. <clears throat> now, we not only know his identity, notice his interest, but then notice his instruments. And I'm trying to hurry. 
What are his instruments to do this to keep us out of sorts, if you will? Number one, I call it the deflated principle. What does that mean? Sometimes he just hits you with a cannonball in the gut. You ever made a decision for God and got up and felt, man, that is wonderful. I feel so good right now. I think I could go, uh, I don't know, uh, jump, jump a lake or something. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm on it, buddy. I'm, I am so thrilled in my heart. I am so happy in my heart. I've got the joy of the Lord in my heart. You walk out of church, you step out those doors, you get out there to your car, and the phone rings or something is said, and... <clears throat> You get hit right in the gut with some kind of a cannonball in the gut. You know what he wants? He wants to steal your joy away from you. He does not want you to be a happy, joyous Christian. So he tries to deflate you. And he tries to frustrate your life. But just remember, <laughs> I'm going to get to this in a minute. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And you've got somebody who lives inside of you. So there's the deflated principle. But then there's what I call the defeated principle. Watch this. Satan loves, oh, I've got to hurry. Satan loves, it's not the preacher's fault, it's mine. I've just taken too much time. Uh, 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 Satan loves to take the situation in our life and cause us to focus upon our situation. If we do that, now watch this, you take an orange, put it in your hand. And you look up at the sun before you do anything with that orange. Look up at the sun and that's a great big huge ball of fire, isn't it? But if you take that, that orange and place it up in front of your eyes and focus on the orange, you know what's going to happen? You'll get it to a place where it will completely block out that big, huge sun. Anybody with me yet? Anybody already caught up with me where I'm going with that? God, uh, Satan loves to take your situation in your life. It may be a physical situation. It may be a sinful situation. It may be a, a, a financial situation. He wants to get you focused on that situation so that the situation becomes bigger than your God. But let me tell you something, friend. There is no situation in our life that is bigger than the God of heaven. There is no situation that you're going to face a face in your life that the very God of heaven can't reach down inside and turn those things move those things work on your behalf and deliver you through them there is no situation bigger than our God uh, okay you don't believe me some of you looking at me like a calf looks new gay I'm glad you don't so that way I can tell you this you remember a story there in Hebrews or I'm sorry in Daniel you remember three Hebrew boys you remember that great crowd, that music? You remember the fact they were supposed to bow? Are you getting the story? You remember they didn't? You remember they come out? Now watch this. They got a pretty tough situation because the king said, you don't bow, you're going to burn. But then they come out to the king. Watch this now. And the king says, you will bow. And if you don't bow, crank her up seven times hotter. Let's make this, come on, situation. Oh, come on. You've got to help me. I can't preach if you don't help me. Are you listening to me? Let's make this situation bigger. Let's get it bigger. But let's, you just listen to me, brothers and sisters. You look in the midst of that situation, somewhere you're going to find Jesus Christ walking in the midst of your situation, walking all over your situation. Why? Because he's greater. Greater, greater, greater is our God who is in us than he that is in the world. So stay in focus. Amen. The defeated principle that a deflated principle and then I'd like to say he also uses the discouraged principle how many times have you tried this just, just watch this I love this a just man falleth seven times and rises up riseth up again now maybe you don't get a hold of that it did not say any man falls seven times. Did you get a hold of that? A, <laughs> you're not helping me. A just man. Not just any man. A ju Are you listening to me? What does that mean? We've been justified by His grace. We've been made just. 
just as if we had never sinned. Oh my, Satan comes along. He tries to discourage you and he says, look, don't even try that. There's no way you can make that. You just remind him that you are a just man, justified by his grace. And there is nothing that can hinder you or stop you as long as God is behind you. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's get into this thing, man. There's a lot, but I'm having a good time. So we have a defeated, we have a discouraged, we have a deflated principle. There's two examples of people in the Word of God who illustrate, and, and I'm not going to preach them, I just want to show you that it is possible to live the Christian life here on this earth. <laughs> I know one of them you're going to talk about, preacher. And you're being mighty skeptical, preacher, because you're trying to use somebody who happened to be God. I know, but he's 100% man, too. And if you'll read your Bible, you'll find out that the Spirit is what led him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Hello! Someone said, hello, somebody ring Tokyo. Amen. I'm saying, hey, the Spirit led the Son of God into the wilderness, and in the wilderness he faced Satan, and he did not face him alone. He faced him with the power of the Holy Ghost of God. And what he is trying to say to you and to me is that we can have victory in our life if we will allow the Holy Ghost of God to have the ruling reign of our life and if we will use his precious word we have victory <laughs> hallelujah I like it all by myself but watch this one how about Job <laughs> there's no God man there though he slay me yet will I trust him why because he's worthy to be trusted <laughs> So, they overcame him. Now watch this. Here's the rest of your title. By making much of Christ. Now, have I got time? Just a few more minutes, preacher. Am I all right? I think they're with me, as long as, as, long as you're all right with that. Making much of Christ. Now, let's look back at our text. Let's look what it says. And they overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto the death how did they by making much of Christ we minimize Christ in our life we only use Christ as that little bell God uh oh we only use Christ like uh, that little uh, uh, fat guy Buddha, Buddha God. You know, we, we carry him around in our pocket. And when we think we need our little God, and God knows there's no disrespect intended by this, it is simply preaching. When we need him, we'll reach in our pocket and say, okay, little God, go and do something for me right now. But I'm going to tell you, God cannot fit in your pocket. God is not a light switch on the wall to be flipped on and off when you want to. God is God. And with him, there is nothing impossible with him nothing impossible with him amen so with that being said they made much of Christ well what do we need to make much of first of all the provision of Christ well what is the provision of Christ watch this two things here in our text number one a changed believer <laughs> Whew. I like that one really good. See, it was his grace work and it was his good work that he did in me. <laughs> and he's still doing in me. See, he saved me by his grace. He's still working on me. Satan wants us to get our eyes to thinking that the potter has left the clay. But not so. The potter will not leave clay on a wheel and walk out of that room because the moment he leaves it that 
pot, pot, uh, that clay becomes dry and it will crack. It uh, becomes unmotable. So therefore, we will not leave God's hands. Why? Because He's still, He's still working on us. And Satan wants you to focus on the fact Jesus has walked away. Oh yes, maybe He saved you that same thing. Maybe you've had your life changed, but He's done. Oh no, 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 no. He's not done with us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. That's what your Bible says. So therefore, His hands are gently around you. And He is, oh, it seems hot. I know it's hot. Sometimes it seems rough as He's cutting some things away. But let rest assured, beloved, Jesus Christ does not move His hand away from His clay. Amen. He's doing a work. Well, how do you know that? You're trying to talk about Old Testament. Oh, no, 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 no. Ephesians chapter number 2, verse number 10. And we are his workers, <laughs> created in Christ Jesus unto good works. In other words, I can't do good works, preacher, unless he helps me to perform the good work. <laughs> How am I liking it? And what is good works going to do? It's going to influence those that belong to Him to want to come to Jesus Christ. Amen. A change, believer. Now, I've got to really hurry. There's a lot of preaching here, but just get a hold of this. Think about this a minute. A change, believer. Tonight, I heard some of the greatest testimonies I've heard in the church service in a long time. I'm not trying to blow your head up. I, I tell you, it gets old to go to churches and have the preacher stand up and say, let's have some testimonies. Well, I thank God I saved back here in 1949. And I tell you, it was so wonderful to get saved and born again. I'm just so glad that God saved me. Hit the shout button, everybody say Amen. amen. And we sit down. And the next time we come to church, somebody got to test. Well, I just want to thank God. Back there in 1949, Jesus, can I tell you something? Hallelujah, Jesus Christ saved us. But our life isn't done yet. And He's still heaping blessings upon us. He's still giving benefits in our life. And the reason that our children at the age of 18 are abandoning churches and going to churches with some life to them is because they do not believe that we really believe in the God that we talk about. Why? Because they're not seeing not just the miracle of salvation but the miraculous of God on a regular basis in our life. Our testimony ought to be getting past baby stage. Amen. That's good preaching even if I did it by myself. It ought to be getting to where when we give a testimony it ought to be let me tell you what God did for me this week. <laughs> Well, tell me about what he did this week. Why do I want to hear about what he did for you this week? Because I'm struggling myself. And if you, they overcame him by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. What am I saying? Your testimony helps me to build my testimony to be all that God wants me to be. And I'm going to tell you, it sure is sweet to leave church Go home, uh, run smack dab into the devil. Who was it this morning? Smack dab. Was that you? I like that statement. Smack dab right face to face in the devil uh, and fight with him all week and to think, I can't wait. Wednesday nights are coming. And you know what? <laughs> you just go ahead, devil. You just keep doing what you're saying. Come on with me to church. Let me tell you some things. Sit down in that church house, feeling a little down and depressed. Come on now. And somebody begin to get up and sing about God's amazing grace. And somebody get up and say, let me tell you what Jesus has done. Hey, it's just Wednesday. But God's been at work this week. He's been working in my life. Oh, yes, it's just Wednesday. But preacher, I'm telling you, God is so good. See there, Satan? I'm telling you, I'm staying with Jesus. Hey, Amen. They overcame him by the word. A changed life. A changed life. God 
has changed us. Amen. I got to hurry. But not only a changed believer, but a covering of blood. Whoa. You said, oh, you already talked about that this morning. Well, let's talk about it again for a minute. I'll just do a minute or two. Covering of blood. He said, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. So in other words, now look at me. It is not an issue of you and I going up. We went, uh, sometimes we'll, if we have a Wednesday open, we'll try to visit a different church. And sometimes you get in places you just don't know about. You just don't know about. That happened to us yonder in a state. I better not tell where it was. And uh, we went in the evening service, our Wednesday service, and we walked in, and the church was closed down, and they had a room off-site. And I understand that. Sometimes the church gets in a place where they're trying to conserve things and have a room, and they'll kind of preach in it. So we went in, and they were all sitting at tables. And the preacher was there in his blue jeans. And, you know, I'm not even against all of that. Man, sometimes a preacher's working a job, and he too has to come in his blue jeans and, and uh, preach the Word. And so I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden this guy starts teaching, and he gets to talking about uh, watching movies about vampires. Yeah, that dog looking in the headlights of a semi. What am I going to do now? And I looked at my kids. He got to talking about how you got to have the cross. And use the cross to ward off those vampires. And I got to thinking, beloved, if all I was going to do is use some kind of an instrument to try to throw out the... Oh, no, no, no. I got far more than that. I got the precious blood of Jesus Christ without spot, without blemish. And here's why that is important. It's not that I just go up and I say, okay, devil, although it's good to claim the blood over your home. Say amen right there. It's good to claim the blood over your business, over your life, over your your children. It is good to do that. But there's more to it than that. See, here's what's happening. In your text, the Bible says that he's in heaven accusing the brethren. Now watch this. We only have a couple kids get in trouble. And they like to say what I used to like to say. Well, Satan made me do it. Well, there's a problem with that. Satan's not in your backyard. He's in heaven accusing the brethren. It probably wasn't Satan. It was probably called the flesh. <laughs> Somebody help me there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I didn't want to admit that. Amen. But in heaven, he's accusing the brethren. Here's kind of the scenario. Here we would have the, the prosecutor, Satan. <laughs> and the father is the judge. And he would stand up and say... I'm going to use you preacher because I don't want to offend anybody and nothing I'm going to say is against you it's just using you kind of as a prop okay now he would say something like that you look at and, and I am not meaning disrespect by any means when I use your name like this you see what's going yeah, you see what old Doug Fisher is doing I would not call him that you understand that church you all right are you with me? Okay? But you see what Doug Fisher is doing? He's down there. You see how he's talking to his wife. You see how he's acting around that house. Do you see you, you see what he's watching? Do you see those things that he's thinking about in his mind? That he could not be a child of yours. There's no way that he could be. He deserves hell. He deserves to go straight to hell. Just that's where he needs to go. You need to send him to hell. And the father would look and say, okay. The wages of sin is death. He's right. He's right. The moment you realize that, you're in a better place. He's right. We deserve hell. <laughs> but he turns and he looks to the advocate side. Oh my goodness. And he says, uh, son, what you got to say about that? And the advocate, which is the man, Christ Jesus. <clears throat> I like that. He stands up and he says, well, Father, you know, everything he said is true. He's dirty. He's a misfit. He's not worth anything. But I just want to tell you something. Father, would you just come with me just a second? See this thing here? This is called the Ark of the Covenant. And here we have, uh, uh, up on the top of this, a little altar here. And, 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 and this little altar, do you see what? It's called the blood, Father. And, and would you just take a look at 
that Doug Fisher through this? Would you just? And the father looks through there and he says, Well, what sins are you talking about? I don't remember them anymore. Uh, they've all been washed out. How? The blood, the blood has covered my sins completely. And if we'll just go to him, if we confess our sin, he's faithful. Oh, he's thankful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when the devil comes up and says, boy, you're a dirty rotten, you're right. But boy, I tell you, I stand justified. Hallelujah by his blood. We overcome him by making much of his provision. Are you with me? Well, what did I do in that? You did nothing. <laughs> well, how do I have that opportunity for victory? It's nothing you did. It's all what he... <laughs> Hallelujah to God. It's all what he did in your life. Amen. They overcame him by making much of his provision. And then I want to say the power of Christ. See, the Bible says in Ephesians 6, to stand in His power. Now, why is that significant? Watch this, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut chase, cut some of this out. Satan likes to do what I call the crushing effect. Now, watch this carefully. Are you with me? You all right? I'm almost done, I promise. I really am. Just five more points, okay? No, no I'm just kidding. But watch this. The crushing effect. What he likes to do is to cause the circumstances that are without to squeeze in upon our life, preacher, in such a way that it crushes us. I like nuts. I like uh, almonds or hard ones to crack. Jerry Harris is a hard one to crack. Uh, but anyway, seriously, uh, uh, walnuts, hard to crack, but I love walnuts. And in order to get what's on the inside, you got to be able to crush the outside. Come on. And so you take that hammer and bam! Well, most of us smashed by now, but as you still get to enjoy what's on the inside. Now, are you with me? And so Satan likes to do the crushing effect. He loves to come in on us and he loves to overwhelm us and put such a load on us that we crush. Now, the crushing effect, watch this, only works when what is on the inside is of less strength to what is on the outside. <laughs> you know where I'm going, don't you? <laughs> Whoa! What are you saying? I'm saying the Bible says in John, 1 John chapter number 4, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He said, I'm sending you another comforter. And when he has come, he will indwell you. He will, <laughs> he will come into you. And I tell you, I don't care what Satan brings in your life. That crushing effect cannot happen to a child of God as long as we're relying on that greater strength inside of us. I'm saying hallelujah to God. He is powerful. Alright, making much of His provision is power. Then I'll just throw these other two to you. Oh man, I'm excited. How about the prayer of Christ? Well, what do you mean there? Luke 22. You don't have to turn there. I'll just tell you what it says. Luke 22, Jesus is talking to Peter. <laughs> and he says, Peter, are you listening to me? I still got your attention. Peter, Satan hath desired to sift you. What he's saying is, he wants to take any good out of your life. <laughs> That's what we do when we sift. The good goes through, the bad remains. And that's what Satan wants to do. 
He wants to sift you. But watch this. And Jesus said to him, But Peter, I have prayed for you. Wow. The Son of God lifted Peter's name up to the Father. Since you're a Catholic, you mind if I say this? I don't think you'll mind it now that you're saved. You'll understand and appreciate this. No priest. Only the high priest, Jesus, lifted his name up to the... That's worth saying again. No priest. No man going between. Straight Jesus and the Father. And he said, I have prayed for you. Buddy, I read that and I had a Holy Ghost temper tantrum. I'm telling you, I danced all over the place. Yeah, I did. And I had a good time. Amen. Amen. And I thought, Lord, that's good. But you know, I sure wish you'd pray for me. Well, I'm a little slow, Brother Jackson. Okay, I'm a little slow. And I was reading my Bible one day. It's a good thing to do. Because you'll find a lot of answers in the Bible. Oh, man, at least the preacher's on board with that. And I was reading my Bible, and I come across John chapter number 17. We talk about the Lord's Prayer, and we say that model prayer, Lord's Prayer, that is not the Lord's Prayer. That's a model prayer. Jesus teaching us how to pray. But in John 17, that's the Lord's Prayer. And he's a talk. And as he's talking along through there, you just read it yourself sometime and have yourself one of these little fits. I come down through there where he says, I pray not for these alone. <laughs> but I pray for them that will believe because of their word. You know who believed because of Peter's word? Do you know who believed because of John's word? Do you know who believed because of James' word? Do you know who believed because of Paul's word I believed so Jesus is saying I'm not just praying for my disciples right here I'm praying out there yonder there's some people going to believe on me they're going to trust me and God I want you to keep them from the wicked oh my word I had dance fit number two is that all right dance fit it was all by myself and even if it was my wife, it'd still be good. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I thought, that's great. He prayed for Peter. He prayed for me. But you know what? <laughs> Life's a long time. And you know, Lord, I still am weak. And you're strong. D did I mention that I'm slow? I'm slow. I was reading my Bible again. You want to come across... Actually, that's a good one, but over in Hebrews, where it says, He ever liveth. I put my Bible down, I run around the room a while, and I thought, He ever liveth. My God's alive. He's not dead. He's not sick. He's not even taking vitamins. <laughs> He's sitting high upon a sovereign throne, and He always will be God. Hey, man, He's alive, man. I'm telling you, I had myself a time. And I said, You know, I probably ought to read the rest of verse. I come back and I looked at it again. He ever liveth. Why? To make intercession for us. You know what you have? You have the very Son of God making intercession on a regular basis for you. Once again, not one I got to go toot and tail to. One I can go to, and He goes with direct access right into the throne room of grace to find mercy. Get this. To help that Catholic ever help but every time I've gone to this great high priest I find help in the time of need amen and then Romans 8 talks about the Holy Spirit maketh intercession for us that's pretty good if you ask me and then the last one is this I'm talking about making much of Jesus now do you understand this thing about the testimony real quick let's rehearse provision He's provided a changed life. Yeah. 
That's not just once and done. He's still working on you. <laughs> well, you messed up. Get up. Get up. Adjust, man. You're going to make me preach that again? A justified, just man gets up. Get up. And let him keep working on you. And then there's that not just change life, there's that blood. Well, I messed up. Well, go to the place where you can get forgiveness of sins. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Watch this. But there's something called the promise of Christ. I lived in foster homes all my life. I lived in 18 different foster homes from the time that I was five to the time I was 15 years of old. Don't, don't, don't feel sorry for me, and I appreciate your kindness, but that's not what this story's about. This story's about a great God. Because I was taken out of my home, and all of the homes that I lived in, Brother Fisher, with the exception of two, were independent foster homes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, independent, fundamental, Bible-believing, peach pie-loving, coconut cream pie, uh, anyway, coffee drinking, Baptist homes. Y'all didn't get that, did you? <laughs> Pretty good Baptist home. And that's all I've known is preaching all my life. And I didn't get saved till I was uh, 15, 16, 15, 16 years of age. In 1985, I received Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Uh, February, I started preaching. I answered the call to preach before I answered the call to being saved. Got them out of order. Amen. It's good preaching all by itself. Anyway, I lived in these homes. And I didn't really have a home like some of y'all have had where you had one set of parents. I've had a multiplied amounts of parents. And there were some of those homes where I would get home from school and they would not be home. But here's what they said to me. Son, here's what you need to do. And here's what you need to do. And here's what you need to do. Now remember, I'm going to come home. You, you, at least you got it. <laughs> uh, this is what you do, and this is what you do, and this is what you. And I'm coming home. <laughs> and if it's not done, I'm not going to be happy. And I loved to try to make the people that I lived with happy. You want it in? I tried. Well, not the hard work because I didn't like work, but I tried to do what they asked me to do. You know why? Because they. We're coming home. You better take these glasses. Because I'm not going to inflict anything on them right now. But are you hearing me? Jesus in Acts chapter number 1 said, Hey boys, there's a job you need to do. And I'm going to the Father's house. I'm heading to the house. I'm going to tell you something. The angel said, This same Jesus shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go. In John, John said it this way. He said, Beloved, that we may have confidence and not be ashamed at his appearing. How can I overcome in my life? By making much of the provision of the promise of God in my life. He's coming Again, I don't want him to find me down in the dumps, out of sorts with God, out of the house of God. I want him to find me singing the praises at the house of God, giving testimony at the house of God, serving in some kind of capacity at the house of God. I want to serve the Lord. Why? Because he's coming again. Oh man, I'm telling you. And one of these days, I'll be singing a song. And I'll be in a different body. Hallelujah to God. You talking about singing. Singing's going to pick up in glory. Amen. I won't have to worry about this old boy. I can let her rip. And those of you that sit like a bump on a log in church, you're going to hit glory. And you're going to take off and say, Whoo. <laughs> And I'm going to look at you and say, ah, ah, none of that here. Those of us that practiced it down there, wow, glory to God. We get to do it up here. Oh, no. No, I'll just join in with you and we'll shout and rejoice. 
yonder there in glory. Why? Because we made it to the other side. He came back for his own. I'm just saying, ladies and gentlemen, we can have victory in our life. We can. And this is not a message I'm preaching to you that has come easy. Because I'm going to tell you, I have faced some attacks of Satan in my own life. Discouragement. Even those fights that we have with sin. Are you sin? Oh Lord, don't talk to my wife. She'll tell you about sin, man. But I'm telling you one thing. I want to finish my life being able to look my Savior face to face and say, Lord, it was worth every mile. It was worth every trial. Oh man, I'm telling you sometimes. I got down my old knees, got bruised up. But <laughs> you made me just. And I got back up. And man, I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost of God helping me inside. I've become an over did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on daily devotions to sign up today and as always thanks for listening